exactly what they're hiring for, what the job opportunities are. So uh, a really great experience for, for students looking for jobs. So I'd highly recommend it. And I think without further ado, uh, our special guest today, Bobby, uh, he's uh, from Michigan Tech University. He's the director of the rail transportation program and also part of the new rail consortium. Um, the, the first place that I saw him was actually <laughs> the bottom part here with the with the National Geographic uh, special on, on the railway in China. So I thought it was a really great great documentary, but I'm, I'm into documentaries. So, <laughs> so without further ado, I'll, I'll let him have the stage. So here's a, I tried to kind of pick a little bit different things since you guys are getting started. 
I'll, I'll talk a little bit of, first about the railroad employment because it is kind of special industry. And I hear that there's a lot of graduate students here. I can tell you right away, you're not the typical target of the rail industry. The rail industry really goes after undergraduates. However, I really think that is going to be changing. It is changing. It's going to be changing even more. I think the railroads are finally starting to realize the value of graduate education. They really didn't in the past. Um, I'll talk a little bit the different types of jobs because that's very important to understand in the rail industry. Then I'll, I'll give just a little glimpse of you know how does the railway organization look like, especially the really big ones, the sort of class ones. Then I'll talk a little about the Arena student chapter, you know how we got started and uh, what kind of things to pay attention to. And then I talk a little bit for some of these folks, some of the faculty members, but also you know for you if you want to try to really push the University of Wisconsin Madison to actually build a program around it. And I can tell you I'm pretty darn jealous about this continuing education program you guys have here. Because we don't have anything like that. Now thanks to today we are able to send our students and I have my staff member coming next week getting somewhat the same deal than you guys do going to this course. Like he said, these are thousand dollar courses that are at your fingertips to do just like that. I mean people are coming from all over the country to do that. If I was a student here, I would take every darn one that I could. Because number one, they are expensive. Number two, they're very practical. So you get a lot of um, street credibility, which really pays a lot of uh, dividends in the industry if you take those classes. They're a little different than typical um, you know, academic courses. So here's a few things why you probably should consider railways as a maybe a career. One of the things is demand. Remember this chart. You will see this at every single rail conference that's at least in one presentation for probably in half a dozen of them. It's a classic chart of what happened with the freight rail industry in the US when it was regulated before 1980s. You can see all the flat area here and it was pretty bankrupt and so on. And then it got deregulated in 1980 and you can see what's happened since then. It's been unbelievable the change and the difference in the industry. And the industry is probably one of the healthiest industries in the US right now, definitely on the transportation side, probably the healthiest industry. But the demand is growing, you can see it from the volumes. The demand for rail transportation is really growing and the bigger thing for them is that their market, their market uh, capability to actually raise their prices is coming back. You look at this, they had to lower their prices for a long time to be able to get shippers back. Well, that's changing. Now they are able to slowly start raising them. Do shippers like it? No, but it's the reality. Here's the second reason why you should consider the age of employees. You take a look at this graph, and I can plot this also side by side with the general graph for all the employees in, employees in the US. But what the railroad industry has had is a really heavily um, older generation of people working for them. And if you take a look at this from 97 to 2004 to 2008, the balance has been shifting even more to the older side. Now, on the latest one, you can see a little bit of a rising in the low, in the you know lower end of age distribution too, and that's because they are hiring like crazy to try to fill up all these gaps and all these expertise these people are leaving. But there's quite a lot of opportunities in rail industry for quick advancement. Now that also means that you get quickly a lot of responsibility. So you've got to be ready for that. The third reason is policies. Policies mean a lot. Policies make a lot of decisions. So does market and money, but you know what politicians do really does put a lot of weight. In the US, one of the things that you can see is all the passenger rail development. That's not really pushed by the market, it's pushed by the policies. There's been the high speed rail, you know, initiative, it's taking some bumps on the way and it probably will. You know, interstate didn't get developed like this. It used to go a little bit like this. That's the same thing that you see probably for the next 20 years when it comes to high speed rail. But I don't think it's gonna go away. And at the same time, what you don't see in this graph is on the freight side. All the intermodal moments, the trucking companies working with rail, the shipping companies working with rail, the private public, collaborate, private public collaboration of intermodal terminals and so on. The biggest growing industry on the freight side is the domestic intermodal transportation. 
not the stuff that comes from Asia, but the stuff that goes from LA to Chicago or Montana to New Orleans. And that's money for railroads. So those are the three things that you need to consider railroad. So is there demand really for new people? Um, here's just a few numbers. It's hard to, there's really no good data for that. But we actually did a one study, we looked uh, both in Europe and in the US, we did a pretty extensive survey asking people that, what do you think is going to happen in your rail industry company? And if you look at these numbers, almost everybody's saying past five years we had more people working for rail, next three years even more, almost everybody's saying that we're going to have more people working for rail. So it shows what opportunities. So how many people does the industry employ? Freight rail, these are mainly the big class on railroads, almost 200,000. All the suppliers, manufacturers, almost the same amount. Passage rail, that's mainly on track, 20,000. <coughs> then you take the urban passenger rail, the commuter rails, the uh, subways, all the different stuff, that's another 100,000. And then there's all these other people who are doing stuff for rail industry, but are not necessarily directly considered, you know, specialized for rail industry. So in the end, you're talking about over 600,000 people fairly directly involved in the, in the rail industry. So it's not humongous, but, but it's fairly sizable anyways. Okay, so what can you do? Class 1 railroads. Does everybody know what class 1 railroad means? Can anybody name a class 1 railroad? What would be a class 1 railroad? CNC. CNC, <laughs> Union Pacific, Norfolk Southern, CSX. Um, BNSF. So there's Kansas City South. So there's about two handfuls of uh, so called class one railroads. They are the big employees, the big freight carriers. They handle probably about 90% of all the traffic, all the, all the tracks, all the employees. Those are the big ones. What are they looking for? They're looking for managers. They do have some technical specialists, but mainly they're looking for managers. Then you have all the regional and short lines. These are the small companies like the Wisconsin South of here. If you go to work for them, it's much more, it's a little bit more of a mix. You know, you got to handle multiple different things over the time frame because they don't really have that many specialists on all the different areas. Then you have the consulting side. These are where a lot of graduate students end up going. Those are the technical jobs, the designers, the engineers, designing bridges, designing tracks. Designing intermodal terminals, communication, signals, you name it. Then you have contractors building the tracks, building the facilities, and so on. Manufacturers, locomotives, cars, maintenance of way equipment, a lot of really high technology stuff. And then you get to the public transit side, looking both managers and technical uh, experts for running the subway lines if you want to stay on the passenger side, if you don't like the freight as much. This is the new big area, DOTs. There's so much public-private partnerships going on, and so, much, so many DOTs are, have to get involved in rail. There's very, very little expertise on the DOTs. I, will, I, I guarantee that one of the big things that will employment is going to be growing over the next five, 10 years is going to be rail experts in DOTs, or at least semi-rail experts in DOTs. And then if you look at the more operations side, you have all the shippers. They need to understand supply chains. They need to understand how to ship by rail. These are all the business side, the operations side, and so on. And then I have this little one here. You know, everybody talks about the high-speed rail and high-speed rail. Yeah, but in the end, until you really start having these systems going to the ground, you're not going to have that many people who really concentrate on them. And they're definitely not going to be at the entry level. So this is kind of a rough mix of all the different opportunities in the industry. So what you really need to think about is that what do I want to do? Do I want to be a manager or do I want to be a technical expert? Because don't pick the wrong side. If you pick the wrong side, you're going to get frustrated and you may end up leaving the industry. If you go to the class one or some of those sites, typically most people go to management. Here are a few things that you definitely want to have when you go there. If you like the more technical stuff, consultants, manufacturers are more typical and there's a couple of key personal traits or characteristics to survive on that side. And you know, this is not, this is just kind of rule of thumbs. It doesn't mean that you can't work for gas one if you're really technical and so on. I had a couple of my graduates who are very technical, they love technical stuff. 
they were able to find themselves a niche position at the class one and work what they really wanted to do. But those jobs are few and far apart. The great number, the majority, 90%, I would say, are going to go to management. So, what can you do to improve if you really want to go to work in the railroad industry? Get a co-op or get an internship. There's nothing better than that. For graduate students, definitely working on a research project related to the railroads, taking any classes that you can, including continuing education classes, are going to help. But in the end, this is what the railroads value the most. There's no doubt about it. Even if it's not with their company, but if they see that you've been in the industry, they have a feeling that, okay, he already was here and he wants to come back. He really likes this industry and he's not afraid of, you know, maybe some of these long days or something like that. So they feel more comfortable. Definitely classwork and student projects. If you can do something, even if it's your own little volunteer project, if you can show something in resume that is specific for railroads, I guarantee 95% of the applications they get, the applicants have no background in railroads or it. Even being in this chapter is going to be key. Obviously, our EMA student chapter and any other leadership activities, huge things. Those are really important. How do you apply? There's a few things. One of the things I would recommend for you to consider with your own group is create your own resume. And when you start getting companies and speakers, when they ask, hey, who's available there?